we're going to continue our journey on studying on studying monads so um, this is all in context with haskell and um, this is the second part of our uh, of our video on on monads and um, so let's 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 try to get an intuition behind behind monads here so let's assume i've got a function f i've got a function f that goes from the the type signature for this function f is that it goes from a to b it goes from a over to b and let's say i've got another function g i've got another function g that happens to go from b from b to c all right and uh, i would now like to perform a function composition uh, uh, between between these two functions so I'm going to use the function composition com composition composition function com composition operator which is the period sign so uh, this is the function composition operator and uh, the signature for this uh, is basically let's say it takes in a function so again it's just a type signature the type signature really is that it takes in a function, let's say that goes from that goes from uh, a to b. Uh, let's just have it the other way around. So let's say it ha the first function that it takes in uh, goes from b to c, and the second function is a function that goes from let's say a to b, and the resultant the resultant after performing a function composition between the two is going to be a new function. That actually goes from a from a to c all right so this is the type signature here and uh, given this type signature if i were to write uh, if i were to create a value if i were to create a value that uh, that 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 uses the function composition function i could uh, i could use um in this inflex operator i could say um, let's do a function composition between g between g and f between g and f okay so g in this case goes inside it's a, it's a part of a function that goes from b to c that function f over here is a function that has a signature that goes from a to b and um, now the resultant of this resultant of performing a function composition between g uh, between f and g in this case is going to result in a new function is going to result in a new function so let's just use anonymous function over here it results in a new function which takes in a parameter, let's say x, and it's going to give you back some value that happens to be uh, in the uh, as a type that has c. So all I'm going to do is take in this value x, which happens to be of type a, and perform feed it into my function f. So that's f of x. f of x results in basically a new value that happens to be of type of b. But now I take my function g. And apply that on the entire thing that is going to give me back a new value of type of some type c there okay so this is my function function composition between two all right so this is all good this is all nice but let's say i i, I now realize you know what i would like to i would like to perform maybe a little bit of i would like to just log some debug messages as my function f f computes and i would also like to log some 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 messages um, as my function g computes so I just don't want the value b I want that value b I want that value of type b but in addition to that I would also like some maybe let's say some 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 debug messages all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just change my function which is my original function f to let's say a new function which is f prime so let's let's create a new function f prime now and um, uh, this is a function f prime that has a type which takes in still something of type A, but now as an output, it gives me back a tuple. It gives me back a tuple that has a first component, first component B, and uh, the second component is basically the debug messages. So it could be a list, a list of chars. It could be a list of a list of chars here. All right, and um, let's create a uh, let's 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 make a change to a function G as well, so that it could it also has the ability. To return back to return back maybe a list of some some debug messages in addition to the computed value of type C so the signature for my G prime is going to look like something of the kind where it takes in it takes in some input of type B 
and gives you back as an output um, something that is a tuple that contains the first value um, of type C and the second happens to be of a type of a type char. Alright, so I've got my functions f prime and g prime. Alright, this is all good, this is all nice. But now the question comes down to do I still have the ability to actually perform a function composition between f prime and g prime? So uh, can I can I still do something like this? Can I can I still use my function composition operator that I had previously, which I was using here in the in this in this example with my functions g and f? Can I still do something where I had g prime g prime function composition with f prime? Can I still can I still do that? Okay, let's 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 try to see this. So with f prime with f prime, the first thing is. Uh, uh, if this is my if this is my signature for my function g and this is the signature for my function f over here, my function f, all right. In this case, this is f prime and g prime. If you look at f prime, f prime is a function that still takes in something of type a, all right. This is fine. This gets accepted and gives it back something of type b. And this entire b could now be considered maybe as a tuple as a tuple that contains two components, all right. And um, and this is fine. So, so so far, this looks okay. And um, but now the question is, can I actually can I actually um, uh, take that and feed it feed it to my function function g prime? Um, g prime, on the other hand, uh, still ex expects as an input. It still expects as an input something that is just the pure value, just the computed value b. Remember this b over here, okay? This b over here that I'm considering for g prime is just the computed the computed value. But what I'm getting for b in this case is basically a list. I'm getting back a tuple. I'm getting back a tuple which is uh, which is containing um, this b over here is basically something of this kind where uh, I have uh, b comma comma a list of char. Okay, and this B over here that I'm considering is just this B, the, the, the first component of my tuple. So it's quite obvious that I cannot perform any more function com composition using the standard function composition operator. Okay, this completely, completely fails if I were to perform a function composition across F prime and G prime. Okay, so if that were to fail, if this were to fail, right, and uh, again, if I did not make this a little bit clear, let me let me just say this again here. So um, so let me maybe choose a slightly different color. Okay, so so f prime is this method that takes in something of type A, gives it back something of type B. This B in this case is basically something that happens to be this tuple is this tuple of two parameters b comma list of char. So this b over here, if I try to keep my types consistent should be something that happens to be this b should in this case also should be something that is a tuple that has a first component let's say in this case uh, some 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 type b okay and uh, it next to be something of char just so that we don't confuse this b and this b over here let's make this this of some type i don't know x so this becomes x as well and uh, now i know that g prime should be taking in as an input basically a tuple it should be taking in a tuple that has the first value uh, uh, of some type x and a second component of a tuple should be should being a list of char but this 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 what it expects for function composition and what g prime actually is are two different things right this b over here is basically the the first component of this tuple right there so there's quite a mismatch, and because of this mismatch, this composition actually actually fails. This does not this does not work. So how would I do that? How would I still still perform a function composition? So what I really need to do now is if I if I think about this clearly, what I need to do is I need to take this method g prime in this domain. It, it's working it's working on this type that uh, takes in as an input parameter, uh, which is uh, of some type b. And giving it back something as an output that happens to be a tuple. If I could somehow change the signature of my g prime, right? So if I change my g prime 
so that uh, let me use a slightly different color here. So, um, so somehow now when I'm meaning changing, what I really mean is somehow lifting. If I could somehow lift the method G prime, so that it works, it works, it works something of the kind where uh, let's call it G double prime. Okay. So let's see if I could somehow transform my my function G prime to G prime to G double prime where the type signature for G double prime is something that works, that works uh, uh, something of this kind where uh, my input is basically a tuple that goes from B. Uh, uh, it's a tuple that has the first component B and the second component a list of char and out comes back, out comes back as an output a tuple from C to the list of char. Okay, if I could somehow change G prime to, to, to this method over here, okay, then the idea of function composition could be something like this then. Then I could say, um, let's do this. I have this magical method. Let's say I have this method in this blue, blue thing. I still don't know what to call this method, but let's just call it a square box. What I'm going to do is on this in this blue method, I'm going to first feed it G prime. I'm going to feed it into this G prime. Okay, by feeding G prime into this into this method over here, I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back as an output G double prime. This entire thing, this entire thing over here, this entire thing over here is going to result is going to result in G double prime. Okay, this is going to result in G double prime. Once I've got this G double prime. If I get back this G double prime, then I can perform function composition. I can perform function composition the way it is uh, right with F prime. I can take this and I can say F prime. Okay. And this will be this will be okay because this is going to result, this is going to result in a function, in a function that takes in some value x. Okay. And if I perform F prime, F prime on x. F prime on X, the type of this, the type of F prime on X is going to be, is going to result in basically a tuple that goes from, that basically has the first component, uh, some value of type B and the second component, some value of type, of type char. Now I can take this entire thing, I can take this value that gets, that gets fed out from F prime and now I can perform on this entire thing G double prime because G double prime can take in as an input something that happens to be a tuple of first component some value of type B and the second component some have something that happens to be a basically a list of char. So now I can take this and I can basically take this entire thing F prime X and on that entire thing on the entire thing I can just basically do G G double prime. I'm going to assume that G double prime is basically this piece over here. This entire thing, this entire piece over here is basically what G double prime is. And um, we now have a name. We now have a name to this uh, to this blue box over here. The name to this blue box over here is basically is basically the bind is basically the bind method. Okay, this is what the bind bind method is. And the bind method is actually defined is actually defined within the class monad. So if I look at a type class monad, within a type class monad, I basically have, have the bind method. And the signature, the signature to the bind method, the signature to the bind method is basically, the bind method is also also called, or also, uh, is also called as this. Uh, okay, so I always I always forget um, uh, whether it's a greater than or the less than sign, but uh, but these two signs followed by the equal operator is actually the bind operator. Is this is a bind operator? Okay, and the signature for the bind operator, at least within the monad class, is something that takes in a value of type MA, and um, it takes in a function that goes from A to MB, and uh, the output of this is basically some value of type MB. Okay, so the way to best do, the way to understand this is if you just to flip these parameters, if you just to flip these parameters, so that if I have to rewrite this as a function that uh, goes from A to M B and uh, M A to M B, 
Now, this is exactly consistent. This is consistent with what we just what we just talked about in this uh, in this video over here. So I can see this as a function. I can look at this as a function. This entire function over here is basically g prime, and uh, the bind operator takes in as an input um, a function g prime and basically lifts it. It lifts it so that it gives you back as an output as an output another function in which case g double prime just so that I can take what I'm doing in this part of the typo and be consistent with some of the description that uh, uh, with my notations of g prime and g double prime over here. Okay, so it has just lifted. It has lifted the method g prime into into this, and by doing that, and by do, by 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 using the bind operator, I now have this um, this this uh, this this idea where I can I can I can continue using my function function composition function composition uh, uh, across this uh, on this uh, lifted uh, lifted method. So uh, so this is something I just wanted to give you a little bit of an intuition um, in terms of um, in terms of uh, uh, the bind operator that is uh, that is used that is that is the that is a behavior of something that has been defined within the monads uh, type class and um, my uh, later videos is now going to um, look at uh, monads a little bit more again but now we're going to look at what are some of the types that I can make instances out of the monads type class and um, and how would it go about um, implementing implementing the uh, bind method within these uh, within these types.